I uh, want to start back. Um, I have waited this entire week to hear all these wonderful testimonies telling what has happened, uh, what happened to you last weekend in Phoenix. And, you know, God is really good. He is. He just does things for us that we couldn't possibly do for ourselves, or he does, he works things out uh, that we could never begin to work out. I mean, God, God did that. Brother Mears, as wonderful a man as you are, and you and Brother Benny and all these ministers, there's no way in the world you could have put that together like God put it together. It's just, I think it's just absolutely wonderful and the more I hear about it, the more excited I get. And I want to thank you, Brother Mears, for listening to God, because he uses instruments like you. Oh, I thank the Lord. I just uh, appreciate it so much. And uh, I've got a confession to make. You know, Brother Mears, before you went, you kept asking everybody to pray. And... Um, and I was praying. Believe me, I was, I was uh, concerned because uh, of the situation and I want to be careful what I say right here but but uh, most of you know and I uh, was really worried about it because not knowing how I have about 60 people I guess in my family over there they don't all go to Brother Benny's church regularly but they certainly look to him as their pastor and and regard him to the very highest and of course uh, I was really worried uh, that if if I or or my family even showed up over there that during this meeting that it would cause them to be upset at me and uh, I was worried about that and then you were telling us to pray brother Mears and I knew you said that you really felt like this was the right time and I knew that you had put this off for a long time. And I certainly wasn't against the trip. I was really thrilled that you were going. But I still had this concern in my heart and, and a little worried feeling. And when you would say, I really feel like this is the right time, which you said on several occasions, if you remember, I said to myself, oh, Brother Mears, I hope you're right. I really hope you're right because I was so concerned about it. Well, you know, after the Lord worked things out like he did, I really felt ashamed of myself to ever even, I'll never doubt you again, Brother Mears, and it really wasn't that I doubted you then, but I just had this extra concern over the situation there that I was worried about how things might turn out because I've been in the middle of it and I, I know the pulse over there and I just, Never dreamed, I never dreamed that anything like this would have happened this past weekend. And I'll tell you, I have never shed more tears of joy in my life. And it started Friday night, right after you got there. The first night, I believe uh, Steve called home and told Becky, and Becky called Bonnie, and Bonnie called me. Before I could go to bed, she let me know about what had taken place the last part of that service. And how wonderful the Lord began to work right from the beginning of that meeting. And I just, I just felt from that time on, Dolores, you have doubted entirely too long. It's hard telling what God's going to do before this weekend is up. But I never, never, not in my uh, greatest dreams would I ever imagine anything like this. And Brother Mears... Believe me, if those people over there, and I believe they are, are as excited over what took place Sunday night as you people are that were there, they must really be excited. I have been so thrilled to hear these wonderful, wonderful testimonies and how you felt. And um, remembering those days, Brother Mears, when everything was like that before, and I know I know how that feeling must have been. And I really feel bad because I wasn't there. After all of these years, for something like that to happen and I wasn't present, I tell you, I felt left out, but it was my own fault because I was, I just didn't put my trust and faith in God and, and what you were saying. And when you said, 
that you believe this is the right time, I should have said, Brother Mir said, he believes it's the right time and I'm going to stand on that and go by faith, <laughs> in faith believing, but I didn't do it. But you can be sure from here on out, no matter what the situation is, I'm going to be careful about anything that I decide on doing. But, uh, and it wasn't anything against the trip. And I want you all to know that I was just really concerned because I'm right in the middle of that. But I got a letter this week um, from my niece. And she said, oh, we're really looking forward to coming over there to a meeting. She said, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to be there for all of our people to be in Brother Mears' church? I hope that'll happen soon, Brother Mears. Before this wears off too long, I hope that they can all come here. And I know that they'll all be over, cars, cars after cars, because when one of them go, Brother Benny just has all of them. He just insists on all of them going. I've seen them go farther than this, and that's just a hop, skip, and a jump, and they are so thrilled right now that I just know it's hard telling what would take place, and you would almost pro you probably have to nail me to the floor. I don't know if I could stand that or not. And, um, and you know, the other night, um, I want to bring this up, not because I sang the song, but I was so, I was absolutely so, as many times as we've sung that song, Sister Mears, I just feel like something good is about to happen. I, I, all I could think of, it never, it never did for me what it did for me the other night because of what took place. And also, those words actually became a part of me while I was singing that song. And, um, and all I could think of was, I really feel like it's already begun to happen. And then this song tonight in connection with that, um, we, you know, uh, we see the signs of the times and we realize God is getting ready to come back to this earth again. The King really is coming. He really is coming. And I want to be ready. And, um, but while uh, things like this are happening, you know, we've all sat back and wondered, well, God, how are you going to... Uh, bring this all about your people are scattered they're not all together and how is this all going to come about <laughs> thank the lord because i begin to see as i was singing that song the other night how god is going to begin to bring this about and getting his he's beginning to work on his people and his body and bringing his people together too and this is just the beginning and though we feel like something good is about to happen and i know there's a lot more in the future for us I'll tell you, uh, no wonder, Brother Mears, we'll be able to stand most any, any uh, trials or tribulations or temptations or um, um, I'm trying to s use a certain word. I can't think of what it is right now. But anyway, things that we are going to have to face in the very near future, we wonder right now, will we have grace enough to do it? Is it possible that I could go through those things? But God is going to let us have so many wonderful experiences like what took place last weekend that I believe we'll be living in another realm that we'll be able to undergo most anything that we have to face in this life. And I'm looking forward, hallelujah, to the King coming. And I want to be ready. You know I have never, I have never in my lifetime uh, felt a greater urge within me to become more like the Lord and as you were talking today be an overcomer all glory <laughs> I want to be an overcomer I appreciate what you've been saying about perfection and straightening up our lives and realizing that this is so important for us and, uh, and I really want to I know that I'm not by myself I can see this working in all of the lives of our people and to hear your expressions about how you felt when this took place, and I don't want to just emphasize Sunday night, but I've heard so many wonderful things about that entire fellowship meeting, Brother Mears. The Lord really directed you. I thank the Lord that you were willing to let him direct you. And regardless of what uh, obstacles that even you felt might have been in the way, you were willing to go by faith and trusting in God. We often sing that song, I'm uh, learning to lean on Jesus. And I think, Lord... Uh, 
you know, there must, there really has to be an art in learning to lean on Jesus. That's something that is one of the hardest things I believe that the saints of God today have to do is to learn to lean because we can, I, I was telling this young man and his wife the other day when uh, they invited us to their home to have a meal and I'm telling you, after that meal, those people, they have got hearts of gold. If you can look beyond what your natural eyes see, these young people have got a heart after God and they're looking for a deeper walk with the Lord and they were telling me that they had been searching and searching for a church to go to and and since they've been here several times they said they knew they found what they've been looking for all this time and this girl has the baptism of the Holy Ghost and she was telling me some of her problems and I said, you know, Sherry, I said, we need to learn to lean on the Lord. I said, you know, sometimes we can be praying because she said that they pray and read their Bibles every night. And I said, we can pray and, and, and cast our cares upon the Lord. But before we get up off of our knees, after uh, leaning on the Lord and giving him our problems, before we get off of our knees, we're taking them back in our own hands and trying to work them out for ourselves. So there's really an art in learning to lean on Jesus and let him work things out. And this is something I really long to do. And coming back, <clears throat> back to that song, I just, I think I've got the words right. If I haven't, Sister Mears, maybe you can help me out. But I just wanted to um, re uh, read these words to you. I know you've heard them, but, but since I've said what I have, I, want, I, I really feel like, at least it has for me. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But one of the verses says, I have learned in all that happens just to praise him. For he's working all things for, for I know he's working all things for my good. And every tear I shed is worth all the investment. Um, I know he'll see me through. He said he would. <clears throat> he has promised. I nor ear can hardly fathom, and that's the truth. We can't fathom what God has in store for those who pray. Oh, bless his name. <laughs> I thank the Lord, Brother Mears. I could have never fathomed what happened last weekend. I could have never dreamed anything up like that, but God had his precious hand in it all. I praise God because he's such an almighty God. He's all power, and he knows just exactly what to do and when to do it, and I really thank him for it. <clears throat> also, the next verse says, we have heard all the bad news in the paper, and we hear it all the time, not just in the paper, the news, everything you look at, every time you turn around, you hear of bad things happening, and if we could, would let it, it could cause us to get down, but it said, uh, it seems like things are bleaker every day, but for this child of God, it makes no difference. And let me change it just a little. For the children of God, it makes no difference because it's bound to get better either way. You know why? Because God's got his hand on his people. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank the Lord tonight because God's looking down in tender mercy and whether we realize it or not, God's looking deep inside our hearts and he knows what's there. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Because it's bound to get better either way. I have never been more thrilled about tomorrow. Oh, glory. Oh, that's so much a part of me tonight. I'm looking forward with anticipation, regardless of the things we have to suffer. God has got something great in store for us because we pray and because we're leaning on his everlasting arms. God's looking down and he's going to help us through it. And I've never been more thrilled about tomorrow. Sunshine's always looking through the skies of gray. And I just feel like something good is about to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I just thank the Lord for what has been taking place. I'm the least among you people. <laughs> I've got so far to go. 
<laughs> but I appreciate just being able to, to just sit in one of these seats here and to be able to feel what we felt in that song a little while ago. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if you felt like this or not, but I honestly was able to catch a glimpse of the coming of Jesus. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his wonderful name. <laughs> There's so many things I, I had in my heart to say. <laughs> and Brother Mears, I listened to the tape last Sunday night. A little Ken Brzee brought it to me. I appreciated it so much. <laughs> and I listened to it about four or five times. <laughs> And uh, he only got about an hour and a half of it. He said it was probably close to a three-hour service, so I didn't get to hear it all. But what I heard, oh, God. <laughs> when you were talking, Brother Mears, I, I just, I'm telling you, um, I'm not one to say this too often, but <laughs> I never heard such uh, words of wisdom that you used that night. I appreciate that. I, I know that uh, it was circumstances that you had to be very careful about what you said, but <laughs> it seemed like to me it was words that were very fitly spoken. Everything that was said was absolutely timely. It was just right for that time. <laughs> And I appreciated it so much. And I know, because I know their hearts, I know how those people must have felt that night. And what a thankfulness they have in their hearts since that took place. Because I've heard them many, many times make uh, different remarks about the days that when we were all together. And to think that this has happened again, it's just too much for me. <laughs> I, uh, because of my, not just because of my family, because of that I could put aside, but uh, <laughs> to a degree, but by them all being involved in church, it, you know, it, it has made it a little bit rough, but I have uh, gone over there and, and the certain amount of loyalty that I have uh, felt toward Brother Betty Morris because he was really the only father I ever knew. and. Uh, I guess I was about 11 years old when I moved into his home and they took care of us until my, my sister and I, until we were both married. And um, so, so, you know, even just that alone is enough to cause me to feel a loyalty there. But uh, then uh, I was in that assembly for 15 years before I ever came out here. And, and, and just imagine, if you can, uh, that was really, I've been thinking about it all week, you know, Brother Mears, that was really quite a transaction for me because from a child I had known nothing else but that assembly and, and then when we moved here, <clears throat> I loved the people and, and it wasn't that I didn't fit in, but you know, uh, I started to say, if you can imagine being taken out of this assembly after being here 15 or 20 years and going someplace else and trying to be a part of that, it really was a transformation for me to make. <clears throat> but I'll never forget, Brother Mears, uh, I had been back there on a, uh, for a few weeks and then I came back out here and, and uh, I was really uh, kind of down in my spirits and and I had missed a few services and I'll never forget you calling me and you s told me that you felt like maybe you ought to have a talk with me and I said, Brother Mears, I have pushed myself. I've never, uh, I could probably count the times on both of my hands that I have been out of service and we had five services in Milwaukee a week. And I said, I could probably count the time on both of my hands that I've ever missed a service and, uh, and then, uh, on the nights that we didn't have church, we had choir practice, band practice, and I had all the children, and I cleaned the church all day Saturday practically by myself most of the time. And, you know, I was just busy all the time, every night. I never was out of, uh, um, always doing something for the church. And I said, I'm just tired, and I said, my kids have always gotten on their report cards. I only had uh, Bonnie and David at the time. And on their report cards, always the teacher mentioned they act like they're tired, they're dreamy-eyed, and all these kind of things, you know, remarks that they would make. 
I think they need more rest. And, and all of these things, they were making remarks on the report cards their teachers did. And I said, you know, Brother Mears, I've kept these kids out ever since they've been in school from, from birth on. In fact, when I had them, I was right back in church within a, a few days. I just felt like they couldn't have church without me, and I still had that in my heart. I really do. I'm glad it's there. I appreciate it because if it wasn't there, I probably would miss a whole lot more more than I do but I just when you have church here and I'm not here I just can't hardly stand it till church is over because I can't get my mind off of the service and I'm glad for that desire that's been in my heart but what I started to say I called Brother Mears and Brother Mears told me I feel like I need to have a talk with you Sister Dolores and he did and he said you know you're no different than the rest of us he said I have children he had Connie and Becky and them at that time he said he said, they go to school and they, they still uh, go to church every night. And he said, there's other saints in the church. And he just made me feel so ashamed of myself. And I came out of it. I came to service that uh, following Sunday morning. Brother Mears, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Sister Mears started playing. Um, I, got a, I got a brain block. I can't remember the song right now. I know it just as well as I know my name. Anyway, she started playing it. And do you know that the Lord touched me that morning? And I'll never forget it. it was, we were having church in the morning that, at that time. And um, the Lord added me to this assembly. He really did add me to this assembly. And from that day on, Sister Mears, I never cried about going back home anymore. I love this place. It's been my home. But it's, I've, I've been torn because of, of uh, the folks over there, my, my family and Brother Benny and everything. But I just, I want you all to know that there, this has been the very greatest happening, I believe, that's ever happened in my lifetime because I feel like this is all in the past now. And uh, I don't have to feel under a strain anymore because everything is all back together. Oh, I know I didn't say it all right. <laughs> but I just uh, have so much thankfulness in my heart. I hope you can read between the lines or be able to put it the way I really feel it in your heart. And I thank God tonight for this wonderful spirit that we've been feeling and every service seems to build up greater and greater to me. <laughs> every service that you came back seems to be better than the other one and I appreciate every one of you and, and the way you let God lead you to.